of the cybernet space cube the computer enhanced podcast of the future transformers slag podcast what up everybody how we all doing this saturday night and what a saturday night it is it is the transformer slag podcast Saturday night live stream main event I'm your host, Proto Man. I am the face that runs this place. I am the voice you hear Monday to Friday, and it is a stellar Saturday today. It is a WonderCon Saturday. Benjamin B. Mac is at WonderCon doing the big reveals. We're going to talk about them today, as well as all the other stuff we had this week in our beautiful Transformer world. So if you're new here, my name's Proto Man. This is the face that you have to deal with. For the next two hours or so, we are going to talk Transformers. We're going to be taking some super chats and some questions from the fans. So if you want to participate, hit that super chat or be one of those beautiful green names. And there's quite a sea of them today from Billy B. Michael Koo is back. Cringe McCringle has time off work, I see. James Hopskins, Lizard Sphere X. <clears throat> Prince and Phalanx 59. J.R. Mina from the Philippines. Modertron. Uh, Modur Modur Sorry about that. Um, Patrick Brown. Who else do we got? Who else do we got? We got a lot here. Prince and Phalanx 59. Got uh, Toy Pitco. We got Bigum. <clears throat> got everyone today. Everyone's popping. Ashnut is here. Black Crow is here. I want to make sure I don't miss no way. Roman Schillen's here. Sharif is here. Who else is here? Who else is here? I want to make sure I don't miss nobody because today is going to be a loaded day. Today is going to be quite, quite the loaded day indeed. And uh, let's jump into it, shall we? Because we got a lot to cover. Got a lot of stuff to cover, and uh, we'll definitely take some questions. We have uh, some cool stuff to show, too, that we have. So it's going to be a fun day. It's going to be a fun day. Hope you enjoy the evening together. So let's jump into it first, because we got all these updated, nice, clear images now from when we talked about it earlier this week. But let's talk about first that multi-pack from Target. So when we talked about it early this week, we had some really blurry images it seems that the jt prime 17 train is not over yet he is still uh putting out those blurry images like crazy and uh, now we got some high res ones because we had the transformer thursday reveals and i am extremely excited about this set very much so i know there's a lot of people that there's maybe only one or two pieces of this that interest them some people are very excited about the tarn because they couldn't get it some people are very excited about the the cliff jumper because they're really big in the Transformers Prime and the first edition cliff jumper was ridiculously tough to get in the American secondary market. Some people are really like excited about that squeeze play, aka cancer, you know, because I I mean, I know I am. I know I am. Like, and the fact that here, let's just pull pieces of history here. The fact that he comes with Browning, you know, squeeze play's got a gun. Squeeze plays got a gun. Jin rise on the run. So the fact that they're even doing a squeeze play and the the Browning gun with all the details on it. This is the uh, Diaclone one, and here's the the Master Force version. Yes, I have both. I'm I'm a lunatic. So I mean that's that's wild. That's absolutely wild that we are getting that. And and the fact that we're getting a, a Master Force character updated in Squeeze Play. Again, Mark and Evan, they really like completing those micro collections. That's what they keep talking about. So now it's only a matter of time before we probably get like horrible, you know, and and uh, and we'll see what comes of that. But I mean, it's a very exciting set. There's 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 something for everyone there. That's what I like about it. If you are a more like modern fan that like grew up with the movies and Transformers Prime, there's something for you. If you're a Beast Wars fan, there's something for you. If you're into the Japanese G1 stuff or just G1 in general, there's something for you. If you like the, the IDW comics and you missed out on the Tarn figure, or if you like the Cyberverse series, that's what the Tarn is for. Like the, it, I like these multi-packs because it's it gives you a little bit of everything and What's cool about it is they're usually priced quite affordably. That's what I like about them is that, you know, it's three deluxes and a Voyager that's pretty much priced at the price of like kind of three deluxes. Like the Voyager is kind of free in a lot of ways when you kind of factor in taxes and stuff. So 
I mean, you kind of get like, if you don't like something, you could sell some of the box set and you get, you recoup some of the costs. So it works out in the end. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a nice, valuable item to people in the long run. But, uh, and again, everyone has, has a favorite. Like that was the one thing that I loved about the comments in the segment was some people were like, oh, it's all about the cliff jumper for me. Some people are like, I want the tarantulas. I don't care about anything else. Some people are like, I really want that squeeze play. Some people are like, oh, finally I can get the tarn now and not pay a hundred dollars. So it's like, it's great. It's great all around. That's, that's exactly what I want to hear is that there's no one that's like the suckiest and there's no one that's like clearly the best of the best. There's a nice mix of that. So that's absolutely beautiful. I love it. There's so much going on here. I can't wait for like Mark or Evan to really break down, like let's say through their Instagrams, like how like the squeeze play was like completely retooled from the ground up. It's amazing. Can't talk enough about it, but we still have way too much to talk about today. So we're not going to waste your time. We have two hours, but you know how that slides with us. That passes ridiculously fast and we got a lot to cover. And let's talk about some heroes in a half shell. So, man, um, this one, it's like, I love it, but I hate that it's like, I have to buy like five of these to get the full experience. You know what I mean? It's, um, so again, we got our, uh, party wallop, AKA our turtle wagon, turtle van, party van. And, uh, it looks amazing. I love it. I mean, I love that the little sewer cover on the front of the vehicle becomes a deep dish pizza. I love that it has all the weapons for all the turtles. I love that it has a fifth turtle, like mecha robot mode that's like unique also that could kind of be like a metal head. I love that you could do all four of the turtles, you know, and have all of their weapons. I love that you could flip the, the, the belt buckles and do all of that. I love that finally we have something that's more than just this mutations one that we had all those years ago. I have to transform this on screen now. I don't want to do, but, you know, back in the day we had the mutations one which turned into, let me just show you quickly, it's like it had splinter on the inside there. And, you know, these were these were a wacky piece of history as a turtle fan back in the day. And it's just, it, you open up like this, and then, uh, it's so old, I don't want to mess with it. These are so fragile. But, so, you know, now we, we have something that's not this, was it, this was like 1993, 92, the Mutations turtle van that turned into splinter. Now we got, this one here, fifty nine ninety nine, and uh, yeah, I mean, if you buy four of them, you get all four turtles. If you buy five of them, you get all four turtles and the mecha turtle. If you buy six of them, you get all four turtles, the mecha turtle, and the van on display. If you buy seven of them, you got all four turtles, the mecha turtle, the van on display, and that cool mint in package box that kind of emulates the original Ninja Turtles packaging. There's so much going on here. I absolutely love it. It's going to cost me a freaking arm and a leg to really like do this, this display justice. But my goodness, you know, my goodness, like they knocked it out of the park. I am very, I think if I have one complaint, I'm surprised. And it's, it's a funny complaint because, you know, we always say, you know, bigger is better, but I'm surprised that they're they're Voyager class. These are seven inches tall. They're pretty much like as tall as like your Cyclonus, let's say. So I'm surprised how tall these things are, despite the fact that, you know, the turtles historically have been short kind of characters. And like when you're going to put these next to your Optimus Primes and stuff, they're going to be probably just as tall. But I think to play devil's advocate, I think the the flip side of it is if you make them Voyager class, you have more budget and, and space to do engineering and, and clearance of parts and storage and plastic and pieces. So I think that's another way how it was justified at that $49.99 price point. And make a note of that $49.99 price point because we have other collaborations to talk about that are in that same kind of price point, which will then give us an idea of how big these other items will be. But again, it's great. It's celebrating the 40th anniversary of two brands, both TMNT and Transformers, both were 1984 creations. So absolutely great. Super excited about this. I have a huge vintage Ninja Turtles collection. So this will gladly join the rest, including with my little splinter transforming one here too. So fantastic stuff. But we're not done with the collabs also because we have all of these ones too. So JT Prime 17 came in the clutch and uh, pretty much was like, hey, here's all the other collabs that we're going to be getting 
over the others because we're going to be getting the Transformers X Knight Rider collaboration on August 1st, 2024. That one's going to be $49.99. So we're going to get something that's a Voyager scale kit car. How big is kit going to be? Because so, I was imagining, I'll be honest with you, if we were going to get like a deluxe kit. That's what I figured. Like deluxe car transformer. That's probably like a, an extensive retool of like the Trax mold. Let's say I know people aren't a big fan of the Trax mold, but maybe something in that range. And then like it, they would just knock it out of the park. Or maybe, maybe at this point we're getting, uh, you know, like sometimes it's like chicken before the egg. Maybe we're getting a wind charger mold at some point, and we're going to see that mold and that design first, the skeleton, if you will, through the Night Rider. And then we'll see the the wind charger later on because wind charger and, and night rider kit are the same kind of vehicle and that same, I guess we'll call it DNA and family um, of those firebirds back in the day. So we will see. We will see. It's very interesting though. I'm, this is uh, anyone who's been listening to the live streams knows that we've been waiting for this forever. We, we it was just a matter of time, just a matter of time before all that stuff went down um, then we have the Star Wars collaboration. We don't know what that is, but we do have a confirmation that it is coming. Uh, it could be anything. The So just like how the Ninja Turtles um, collaboration, it was codename Project Renaissance. The Knight Rider collaboration was Project Knight. That was its codename. And this Star Wars one is called Project Tales. Which, you know, some people were saying, oh, is it a Sonic the Hedgehog connection? But it's no, it's related to the Star Wars one. Maybe I'm missing something here. Does Tails mean anything to a Star Wars fan? Is it some kind of in 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 joke vernacular? I don't know. But that's kind of will direct you in some way to maybe give you an idea of what's happening with that. And then, of course, if you're a collector of the recent Beyblade X line, that is that is the, you know, the next wave of Beyblade products since Beyblade Burst is now done. Uh, there will be some Beyblade Transformer product that will be happening. Now, these aren't transforming Beyblades, but more so Beyblades with a Transformer skin element to it. Uh, last year and the year before that, Beyblade Burst through their digital cell phone app had Transformer skins for their product. They played with the idea of, hey, wouldn't it be cool if there was like Transformer themed Beyblades? And they did a bunch. They did the two that we see here on the screen. They did the Optimus. They did the Megatron. They did a Bumblebee. And you could collect the parts. You could collect the centerpieces. It's really cool. It was really cool, but unfortunately, they didn't make physical ones. Now it looks like we're going to be getting physical ones through the Beyblade X era. And they're going to be two packs of those characters. So we have a Beyblade X Transformers Optimus Prime and Megatron. We got a Beyblade X Transformers Optimus Prime and Starscream. And probably we're going to see others. The chances are if like these two both do well, we'll probably see maybe Bumblebee. Maybe we'll see Grimlock ones. And will they have transforming elements to them? Probably not. I mean, there has been Beyblades that had transforming elements to them in the past, starting all the way since the beginning of like the 2000 era with the plastic gen. But we will see what happens. It would be cool, though. It would be cool. I know I'm going to pick these up. I love any of these like, you know, this is a classic example of Hasbro going, you know what? What other products and what other like, you know, IPs do we own that we feel could naturally kind of commingle? And it's something where Beyblade has been a prominent part of the Hasbro library since Beyblade's inception in 2001. So they were just kind of like, hey, we could do something here. And it's funny because like one of the, the the key components who brought over Beyblade into America, Steve Bono, who was a friend of Aaron's, we did a segment on the Toy Armada with Steve, where we talked about bringing Beyblade to America. Steve Bono was a huge component on alternators and a lot of other Transformer product too. So it's a natural fit, even if you don't know it is, you know? So very cool. I dig it. Let me know what you think about all of these guys. I think they're cool. And again, the, the, the Knight Rider one is probably the, I'm the most excited about just because it was only a matter of time. And let's talk about some God Masters, Master Force, my set, one of my favorite Transformer series is. We got some nice, clean, non-blurry images. Still not the best, still not 100% perfect, but some nice, clean images of our MP60 Jinrai and our MPG-09 Supa Jinrai anime colors. So I talked about this recently. Uh, we haven't gotten any major updates since, except now clear, clear images of these guys. So now you can at least see 
the high Q, aka uh, Jinrai Power Master Godmaster, a little better. And it does confirm that the toy version, which is the toy version colors on the top, has the red eyes and is going to have the blue visor and the white face for the Power Master Godmaster, while the bottom one here, which is going to be the anime colors, will have the blue eyes and the blue visor and the skin-toned face for the Power Master. So it really just depends which one you want. You know, do you want to have the extremely toy accurate version that maybe some of you grew up with back in the day, you buy that this version here on the top, the MP60, it's going to come with a sticker sheet that if you buy the trailer from the MPG one on the bottom here, you have a sticker sheet that then you could kind of mix and match and make it look screen uh, toy accurate to that 19, 1988 Power Master. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. This is something that... Um, I have a bit of a connection to. I love uh, Power Master Optimus Prime. It was just like one, it was one of those more predominant Transformer figures that I remember at school seeing because he was the later Optimus Prime toy. I was someone who came into Transformers in 1986. So by the time we got to like 1988, 1989, especially with like the Action Masters and what the comics I was picking up at the time, Power Master Optimus Prime was a big part of that, combined with the fact that I think that Master Force is like in my top three favorite Transformer series of all time. And Jinrai, Super Jinrai, Goto Jinrai is just the coolest thing ever. So the pricing on this too, oddly enough, the big, the 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 MPG here. Uh, actually comes out cheaper than even our like our MP44 Convoy 3.0 we got. So I'm very curious how big this spot guy's going to be. I'm going to assume that he's probably going to be in that Star Saber range. If you had the Masterpiece Star Saber, Masterpiece Star Saber is bigger than every single Masterpiece we've gotten up to this point, and still to this day the tallest one. Uh, and Masterpiece Star Saber is still almost, I think, kind of taller than even our Hazlab. So... Is this something that might be even like bi as big as that Star Saber in a lot of ways? If not, maybe slightly shorter when we do get a God Bomber that'll then close the gap and you'll have Victory Saber and God and uh, Goto Jinrai shaking hands, you know, just awesome stuff. I'm so, I'm so excited about this just because I'm a big Master Force guy. And when we finally get like good premium items of these characters, it just makes me happy to see. And I saw a lot of people were unloading their Legends version of uh of super jinrai very quickly so i was like it, that's just how it is it's always when something better comes all of a sudden legends jinrai and legends uh, god jinrai ended up on the chopping block with everybody so we'll see what happens more with that we'll stay tuned for it but good pricing and i really want to see some clear images again the the uh pre-order dates for these are going to be april 10th japan time which is going to be a tuesday for us in america uh, at least in the East Coast uh, Hasbro time, it'll probably be a, like, you know, a Tuesday. So we might get like a Transformer Tuesday pre-order for this with really nice images uh, on April 9th. So stay tuned for that. We'll see what happens, but I love it. It's great. Now then, let's see what we're here for. Let's talk about WonderCon and let's talk about what we saw at WonderCon. So uh, Benjamin B. Mac. He had a panel at WonderCon. It was the Hasbro Action Brands panel. And he had a nice brisk 15 to 20 minutes to reveal uh, the latest of the Studio Series releases, as well as a nice trip through the Space Bridge, which we'll talk into a moment also. But we got our very first look at our Leader Class Studio Series 86 Dinobot Swoop. Uh, long overdue, people really waiting for it. Uh, the big takeaway from that that a lot of people are noticing is the two swords that he's holding, which one is clearly for Snarl, the other one is for Swoop himself. And I I still I still stand by my belief that when we got that comic edition Grimlock that came with the three swords, I think the three Dinobot swords that go with the other three members, I think that that is something that's on a separate sprue for the model. And I think that it'll be distributed through different kinds of venues and panels and stuff like that. Like you're going to be able to get these sw swords through that comic three, that comic Grimlock. So you're going to be able to get those swords that way. Then they'll probably do the Grimlock reissue at some point, which there has been rumors of that. Maybe they'll throw the three swords in there too. 
Maybe they're going to do an accessory pack with Target again. Maybe they'll throw those three swords in there. But it, even these two swords that come with Swoop here, I have a feeling that the swords that come with this Swoop are probably on a separate sprue also. And it's just something where the opportunities will present itself and people... First of all, people are already trying to complete their Dinobots to begin with. So the the aggravation that people might have that Swoop comes with sl uh, like Snarl Swart. Unless you're someone that's just buying Snarl just for the sake of Snarl and you're not buying any of the other Dinobots, then I could understand why you're not happy because the sword is stuck behind a character. But at the end of the day, I mean, I think everyone's getting all of them and they're just going to be slowly completing their dudes one way or another. I dig it. I think it's cool. It's Swoop. I mean, geez, like between the original toy um, you know, Aaron Archer with the, the swoop that they did during, during Energon, which, uh, ended up, it was supposed to be a classics item and not a classics, a universe item that ended up becoming, uh, an Energon item with the Grimlock combiner, you know, and then of course, all the other versions throughout the years, even leading up to the power of the primes version, us getting one, of course, also through, uh, through, uh, you know, our volcanic kiss core class. I mean, we've been getting a lot of good swoop figures, even the one we got through Cyberverse that was a female character. So a lot of swoop, a lot of swoop. People have been people have been clamoring about this one. Our Dinobots, at least on an official capacity, are now complete for leader class, unless they want to go into the paddles and some of the weirder ones and maybe a, a, a leader class slash. I, I can't imagine they do that, but it'd be, I'd be kind of curious how they would tackle it, but... You know, maybe they'll maybe they won't do a, a leader class version. Maybe the, because she was a smaller one, maybe they'll make her like a Voyager or Deluxe from a Dinobot mold. Who knows? Who knows? They'll retool the Dinobot mold, make it slash. But either way, I dig this. I think it looks great. One more to complete the collection. Hopefully will not be too difficult to get. I know that Dinobots kind of have this uh, explode in value after they retire from retail. A lot of people overpaid for Grimlocks and Snarls and stuff like that and, and and Sludges. So let's hope that does not happen again. But people are very happy. And now they finally got to see him. Uh, Patrick Brown with the $2 Super Chat. Swords appear to be unpainted. Thoughts seem lacking. Well, here's the thing. If this is something that's an easy to produce mold thing, you don't paint weapons that yeah you can maybe paint the sword itself but i think look if you go all the way back to the original dinobots right the original dinobot toys were just one piece of molded blue uh red plastic and almost translucent wa waxy kind of original plastic i believe aaron might correct me if i'm wrong a pom if i'm cor if, if i'm correct a pom plastic um that can't be painted you know, it's like it's almost like a pom plastic can't be painted. Now these ones here, I don't have them in hand. I these are the best photos that we have, really. In all honesty, it's hard to tell, but it would not surprise me if both the Grimlock ones that we got before with the comic pack, which really they're just they're the images that we have are just painted prototypes and and stock images that use a little bit of CG. That it wouldn't surprise me if they're all unpainted. But at the same time, if they're all unpainted and they could be painted, then you know what's going to happen. We're probably going to get better versions down the line, different versions, other ways that the swords are distributed, painted versions, accessory pack versions. All I'm saying is, and I'm calling it here, this isn't the last time you've seen these swords or the ones that come with the comic Grimlock. I think these are going to be distributed multiple ways and they're going to make their money. They will. That's what I think. I could be wrong. It's hard to see based off of a photo of a photo, <laughs> but we will see. We will see. Michael Koo says, my Walmart has put Toxitron and Grimlock, uh, Toxitron Grimlock on clearance. Well, good time to buy old uh, Agumon. That's what I always say. But we still have also BMAC. He showed us the space bridge with our latest items for Legacy United with its next wave of deluxes. And uh, one Voyager. So, of course, no surprise. Some stuff that we already read through listings. So none of it is really news to us except the name of our next Infernak Rock Lord-esque character. So we'll go through top to left to the bottom and everything. So we got, of course, a deluxe class Robots in Disguise sideburn. No surprise there when we saw our, uh, our Shadow Striker. It was only a matter of time for a little bit of tool, a little bit of twist, a little bit of this and that. And uh, yeah, you're going to end up, of course, with Sideburn. So it doesn't, it doesn't surprise me. Even her weapons, everything, it's Sideburn. Let's be real. 
Um, see, even Aaron Archer says here, the original swords were uh, were not a paintable material. POM is a good guess. Yeah, I think they're POM plastic. That's why, because uh, I'm, I'm guessing based off of the originals. You know, the originals use that very translucent POM plastic that you cannot put paint on. You know, you could, you could force to put paint on, but if you're a, if you're a manufacturing business that values quality, that, that stuff's going to rub off in five seconds, even, even through like the traveling process. So you could brute force it all you want, but it's not going to stick on that waxy plastic. And I imagine, you know, again, I haven't messed with those swords in person from the, from the, the comic Grimlock one, that thing's not out in hand yet. So I can't make that call, but it's just the vibe that I got from that one. And it's very hard to tell with the photos from this one, but even Aaron's on, on the right page too. And Aaron knows more than I do. So <laughs> definitely. So, um, next up with this, we also have the Cybertron universe hotshot. Um, I'm reading somewhere that people are saying it's the car version, um, did B Max say something in the panel? You know, B Max notorious for like, you know, teasing at things and that, like, and everything. So is uh is it something where B Mac mentioned that it's gonna be the Cybertronian car? That would be interesting. I mean, it would add, but to me, it's like the way I see it is you already have a hot rodded kind of race car car in the wave as a deluxe with the sideburn. So then you're also going to have another hot rodded race car kind of car in the same deluxe wave. Also a blue car. I mean, I don't want to go into the business side of doing case assortments and wave assortments, but really two blue race cars in the same wave, almost the same kind of character even. Like if it's the Cybertron Universe Hotshot and it's the, you know, it's the, the tank version, you know, the Cybertron defense one, I think I'd believe it more. You know, I mean, it's still two blue vehicles, which is kind of like, eh, you know, for diversity of the shelving. But still, I, I find that quite interesting if it would be two cars. Think about it. They're both two cars that are blue with clear, clear yellow to orange windshields that are hot rotted, you know, characters. Wow. Both in one shot. Kind of uh, interesting. Uh, then we have the Infernac universe, Nucleos. Um this this could be anything. It's obviously going to be part of our Rock Lord based kind of characters. Is it a repaint of what we got before already with the Infernax stuff? Is you know is it a shard repaint? Is it a Boulder cl Clash repaint or whatever? Oh, it's gonna be Magnus. Um, or is it a brand new tooling? I hope it's a brand new tooling. I hope it's kind of uh, I hope it's kind of interesting. Okay, BMAC did confirm his card. Thank you, Talib. Well, then that's 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 quite bold. I will say from from a Hasbro business standpoint, and Aaron could speak for it also, that is very interesting that the same way would have literally two of the same vibe on the on the peg together. Very interesting that they're doing that. I I, I think that's kind of you you could have moved that around. You know, you could have taken something from wave four and put it here and put the other one, but sure. Whatever floats your boat, you know. So uh, we will see what happens. We will see. Maybe, maybe, I'm, maybe, uh, maybe it's Cybertron Universe Hot Shop, but they gave them the hot rod colors, the Excelion colors. Maybe they did that. Ah, maybe, ah, maybe, maybe they finally did Big Volfog or Volfog from from Gal Geiger, which a lot of people were doing kit bashes of of him. Different shade of blue. Yeah, it, it, it's a darker. I mean, he's a darker blue. The sideburn with the with the Corvette, uh, the Corvette, the uh, the Dodge Viper. And the the it's a light blue for the other one. I, I I agree that it is different shades of blue, but it still is a blue. You know, like it at the end of the day with the packaging, you know, it's going to be two blue cars that are two blue sports cars. So that is that is a quite a bold choice in my feeling. And again, Infernac. You know, it is what it is. We'll see what happens with that. And the last one, and again, I don't know if it's just the choice of image they use the uh, the. Um, Covenant of Primus art, which I believe Jose did that art. I could be wrong, but that's the Covenant of Primus art being used for um, Vector Prime here. So that's very interesting. I, I I still feel that even though they're showing the Covenant of Prime art, I still think the Vector Prime that they're going to design is going to look like the Cybertron one. Uh, and if they want to do something that looks like the Covenant of Prime one, they're going to do that, obviously, in the following year when they do all that original 13 stuff. But or Vector Prime is the beginning of that original 13 stuff. And we're just getting it early here in United before we get to Generations Prime afterwards. But we'll see. 
We'll see again, this is stuff through the space bridge. And what that also means is usually when BMAC shows this through the space bridge stuff, that means that whenever we get our next live stream or fan stream, it will be a product that will be revealed, assuming we don't get it in retail next. Because that was an issue. Because uh, I went uh, I went to um, Wonder, uh, went to WonderCon. I, while WonderCon was happening, I went to Walmart today and the whole wave was there. You know, so I was just like, OK, <laughs> you know, everything that was revealed at, at uh, WonderCon, more or less, was uh, was literally on the shelves in Montreal at a Walmart. And usually Montreal is kind of the last place to get it in a lot of ways. So I was quite surprised, quite surprised indeed. Uh, let's see what we got here. Black Crow, Vector Prime, Sideburn, Nucleos, and Hotshot. I don't know if I'll have the money to add to any of my toy chest, but I will cross that bridge when we get to it. Hey, man, you always got to be smart with your money. I always say, look, it's, it, if it's a, in a situation where you could skip out and maybe get it later, you know, cheaper, loose, complete, always go for it, yo. Always go for it. Always, always take care of your wallet first and your bills before your robots. The robots will always be there. But... Uh, Missing your bills, ruining your credit score, not being having the ability to pay for a mortgage or pay your rent or get a house or save for a house. Don't put yourself in debt. I always understand that, you know, always understand that. Uh, and that's it more or less. But we still have um, we still have some more stuff to cover today. We still have a few other things. First, uh, let's just cover uh, we'll cover first uh, some sponsorship stuff. We got some uh, Symbiote Studio stuff chilling in the back here today, a whole bunch. Um, before that, hold on. Zach has a super chat for $2. Do you think the Cybertron Universe hotshot will be redone into a getaway? Ah, the getaway repaint. Ah, that's the good one. That's the one from the uh, the movie repaints back in the day. Um, I imagine they'll probably do the hot rod colors first. That'll probably be like the most obvious direction because there actually is a little more lineage with that. Cause that had like the Japanese version through the DVD box set. And then you had the Excelion version, which was the hot rod version uh, with the flames. So that's pretty cool. Then you add to the fact also, you mentioned the getaway one, which I probably should have pulled it down to show people, but there's a really nice version of getaway. Um, I mean, they have the trademark. So if it's a possibility that they could probably do that uh, combined with the fact that, you know, I've always felt you could do a little bit of Gal Geiger stuff because it had it always had a very Gal Geiger kind of Volfog kind of shape to it. I'm sure they'll figure out stuff. It, it's it's a it's a uniquely transforming sports car that could be turned into a whole bunch of characters. And like I said, the current crew of Takara and Hasbro guys now, they're really good at like like looking at a mold and us like going like, oh, this is totally just this guy. And at most, it could only be this guy. And then they figure out, oh, we could totally change the arms and legs and put a new head and somehow completely make a, a whole new product. Uh, in a lot of ways, it's like kind of like Six Shot, where you could kind of change a whole bunch of pieces on him. And then all of a sudden, it's, you know, it's, it's Six Night, and it's like a whole new character, and it's a whole new look, and a new silhouette, new wings, new head, new arms, new weapons, you know? Um, but yeah, that, I, that would be cool, though. That would be cool. I could see it happening. But I, I imagine the hot rod, and it's not even my bias of hot rod. It's just, I think they're going to do that one next. It just like, when you look at, I wish I could show you guys properly because it's all kind of covered. See like, you know, there's, there he is. There's the blue one. And then every, and there's like the red, red one. And then the, the other red one, that was the legends one. Um, you know, it's just kind of one of these things where uh, the way I see it is there's more of a history with the red one. Because there was the legend scale one, there was the DVD one, and then there was the actual individual Western Cybertron one. So there's just a little more weight with that. The getaway, if I remember correctly, was a Walmart exclusive that was only pushed out because they needed product for the movie because the movie hit fast and hard. And they're just like, hey, let's, I think it was called Power of the All Spark, and it was a Walmart exclusive subline. I remember going to the States to pick all of that up. So we'll see. We will see. It is a good guess, though. It is something I could totally see happening. Definitely more than my Volfog one, <laughs> even though I love Gal Geiger. Um, Modutron Prime with the $2 Super Chat Proto. Did you see the trailer for the new Kaneko Man show? Yes, I did. And I'm very excited about it. I actually, uh, not too long ago, and it's funny when we turn the, the thing, there's a Nisei over here. Um, 
I just recently was rereading uh, the last couple of chapters of the of what the the show is going to be based on because I read those chapters that the show is going to be based on like geez I want to say like four years ago definitely pre pre Big V pre pre COVID so I kind of went back and read like the first couple of chapters just to, like you know get get myself acquainted again because one thing that and I don't want to I don't want to like get people worried but one thing that was always different with Kaneko man I don't want to sidetrack from the, the the transformer talk here is the manga has always been more gritty and adult and bloody than the anime versions always so I want to see how much is going to be changed this time around in the modern era so I want to see that but we'll see we will see uh, but yeah, so let's get into, uh, we'll, we'll take care of some sponsorship stuff. We'll talk about that and then we'll get back into taking some beautiful super chats from you guys and questions and, uh, just kind of looking at some cool stuff, you know, Proto took a little adventure today and everything like that. So first up Symbiote Studios, got our Symbiote Studios stuff here, got the whole crew chilling back there and everything and everyone else got Catnip Bravo over there with the slag, but yeah, Symbiote Studios, the brand new hot rod. And the Ultra Magnus is available on the store right now. Pre-orders are up. Go pick those ones up. They will also be available all over the place when we drop in San Diego Comic-Con. I actually just talked with BMAC recently. BMAC will not be going to San Diego Comic-Con. His wife is pregnant and will be giving birth the same weekend. Uh, that's when she's due. So if you're going to be at San Diego Comic-Con, unfortunately, there will be one less member of the uh, Hasbro crew so it'll just be uh, me, maybe Mark and Evan, and we'll be, and I'll be at the Symbiote booth and the Hasbro booth that weekend. But go check out SymbioteStudios.com. Pick up some Transformer plush. The new Hot Rod and Ultra Magnus is there. The Winter Winter Wonder kit for the uh, your figures are in low supply, so pick that up while you can, as well as the Slag, because we have some other exclusives coming very soon. And if you do not pick up the Slag and it sells out, don't yell at me. Don't yell at me. That's all I'm saying. Don't yell at me. And we got all the rest that are going to be coming. Convention 2024. Who is it going to be? San Diego Comic-Con. That one's going to be coming. It's going to be a special one, as well as a whole bunch of others for 2024. A lot of good stuff are in the pipeline. Uh, it's just waiting for approval from Hasbro. You know how it is. Got to make sure that everything is done to the T. So go check those out. Again, symbiotestudios.com. Everything's up right now. And get your plush action on as well as t-shirts. And then some. And of course, all their other Hasbro stuff. G.I. Joe, Power Rangers, My Little Pony. There's some new My Little Pony designs. Not my jam, but I know that there's people that love the ponies. And there's a whole bunch. And the pony collection is probably the most successful stuff. It's been selling like hotcakes for them. So they've had to reissue a lot of them. The um, the Twilight Sparkle, the Pinkie Pie, and the, the Rainbow Dash has been reissued, I think, like three times now because you people are crazy. But it is what it is. Um, Power Ranger pins are on sale, so don't go pick those up too because those are going to be phased out soon. So get those while you can because when those are gone, those are gone. And of course, importantly too, the Toy Armada. Anyone who was paying attention last Sunday, our latest segment is up. And who are we talking about? Oh, we are talking about the big man, the big black Unicron and all the other uh, Energon crew. We talk about getting that all off the ground because that was the controversial, very, is it a sequel? Is it not a sequel? What are we doing here? So go check it out. The Toy Armada with Aaron Archer, where Aaron and me talk about how Energon got put off the ground. How did Superlink come to be? The, the gimmicks, the play patterns, the clear Energon weapons, the attaching together. What was what was the the Omnicons, the Terracons? What's going on with that? All the fun, all the fun. Go check it out. Good, about an hour and a couple minutes of just me and my dumb voice, along with the King Aaron, King Aaron doing his thing. So check it out archermonster.com forward slash shop we also have some archer monster stuff first of all of course pick up the book you got to pick up the book art of transforming robots volume two color edition almost sold out people when it's retired and it's done it's done uh, volume one is sold out on the store volume two color edition whole bunch of stuff 36 pages of beautiful original transformer art if you don't get it I don't know what to tell you, my man. I don't know what to tell you. They, I remember he brought a stack of them to both TFCon Toronto 
and TFCon uh, Orlando, and they were gone very quickly. That was like some of the first stuff to go. So uh, get it while you can before it's retired. And of course, more importantly, let's close this one too. Uh, we also have another, why is that one open? Eh. And of course we have also, Aaron has a special sale. So before we go into TFCon Toronto in July, this Monday, this sale ends though. So you only have pretty much today and tomorrow. Uh, Aaron is doing a sale on his store, archermonster.com forward slash shop, 35% off sale. He has a whole bunch of new stuff that is on the Posca painted instructions. Use checkout code spring clearance 24 and get your discount. Pick up something nice, man. I think actually, once again, I did this slide and then I think two of these things sold by the time I finished the slide. I think I, I'm, I, I think the, uh, Aaron, correct me if I'm wrong. The Scorpionock is gone now. Someone bought that one. So get these while you can. They're one of a kind when he makes them and you own a piece of Transformer history. Paint it on a piece of Transformer history in the original instructions and you'll be proud to own it. Signed by Aaron in its gloriousness. Go check it out. Again, archermonster.com forward slash shop. 35% off sale ends this Monday. Don't miss your opportunity because when it's gone, it's gone. And that's it more or less. That is it, more or less. Um, what did we get this week? So the only thing I picked up was when I went to Walmart and saw, of course, uh, all the Studio Series stuff that was out. Um, you know, I went to, uh, you know, I went to um, Toys R Us, and Toys R Us has been uh, having quite the transformation here in Canada. For if you're a Canadian, so apparently. Uh, and this is this is also people when people ask the story, how did Toys R Us survive in Canada as opposed to the United States? So Toys R Us obviously was owned by an equity for, uh, for firm in the United States and in Canada. And those guys are kind of dicks, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Uh, they were just kind of using Toys R Us as a hedge for a leverage and trying to make money on all of that and all the craziness. And what ended up happening is Toys R Us got screwed in the United States and couldn't survive in that market. And then the Canadian version survived. And a big reason why the Canadian version survived was because the owner of Sunrise Records, FYE, um, I'm trying to think of some other stuff. He's a billionaire, pretty much. Uh, the billionaire that owns all of those companies uh, his parents were the founders of Imperial Toys. Now, you might not be familiar with Imperial Toys, but if you've ever gone to a dollar store, and I mean like a real dollar store, like a family dollar, and you bought like an off-brand die-cast car, or you bought an off-brand like G.I. Joe-like kind of thing, Imperial Toys was one of those companies that provided for all of those dollar stores for the past 40 years. And his parents were the owners of Imperial Toys, and they still exist to this very day. Now what they do is Hasbro sometimes will will get them to do like low budget versions of their like their Marvel characters or stuff like that. And they still do that to this very day. And he's a billionaire because he was part of that company, broke off and did his own thing. He, he created Sunrise Records, which was FYE and Sam the Record Man. And ultimately, in the end, um, HMV here in, in Canada which is uh, home movies and video or something like that. Uh, no, it's uh, home movies, vi uh, video and music, something like that it stands for. So he loved toys. He had a, he had a f history with toys and family with toys that he bought Toys R Us. And so Toys R Us in Canada is owned by a millionaire now, uh, excuse me, a billionaire. So it's probably not going anywhere in Canada. So that's, that's good news. But the big thing and the why I'm telling this whole story is he now officially integrated a chunk of HMV, picture like Sunrise Records or FYE, as part of Toys R Us now. So now there's a section of Toys R Us with the Funko Pops. And now there's T-shirts, vinyl records, manga. Uh, there's an, a stronger emphasis on more of that. Like, you know, it has a, a hot topic kind of twist, FYE kind of twist to it. Sam the Record Man. You know what? Whatever works. If 
if if if it has the market for it look when i went today there was guys in their 30s and 40s flipping through the vinyls and picking up stuff so clearly it's it's an interesting twist but it's look it's working the demographics going like hey these guys that are buying toys and everything they're also like looking at old vinyls they're looking at you know pop culture t-shirts so you know he already owns that company he owns this company why not make space for it it just makes sense you know, they already phased out the video game division. There's going to be no more physical video game media in Toys R Us anymore, which is kind of sad because there was a huge history of Toys R Us and physical video video game media. But that's, a you know, it, it's it's a changing of the time. But ultimately, and don't worry, guys, I'm going to get to the super chat questions. I'm seeing a bunch of them build up. Um, but so there was a bunch of sales. Also, there was an Easter sale this weekend. If you're a part of the Transformers slag uh, podcast Patreon, which also gives you asset access to the Discord. We were sharing all those sales this week. Uh, I picked up a few things, but the big thing I was happy about was they had a whole bunch of dead stock of GI Joes, and I finally managed to get an extra Dusty for very cheap. I got this for 21 Canadian, which is about right now with exchange about 17 American. So I'm very happy to get myself a Dusty uh, second one. I love my boy Dusty. It's a little, it's a little banged up. Yeah, look at the box there. It's it's been sitting on the shelf forever. This thing's probably been on, been on Toys R Us's shelf for like maybe almost a year now. But that's fantastic. Very happy about that. So I picked that up. There's a bunch of other stuff on sale. Again, the the Beast War stuff is on sale. There's a few things too. Again, if you were part of the Discord, we let you guys know like the day that it happens. That way you don't miss out on the sales and stuff. But great, absolutely great. So picked that up. That was great. Uh, we got some super chats. Let's jump into these. First, before we move forward, Brainstorm 2002 with the $2 Super Chat. Super excited for the MP Jinnai and maybe a God Bomber. Oh, you know a God Bomber's coming. You know it. What they're probably going to do is a uh, God Bomber will probably be a standalone MP. And uh, uh, you know what? I don't know. Like part of me is like, it'll be a standalone MP, but you know they're going to do a box set. Like, you know, they're going to do like some crazy, like three piece box set too. They'll probably do something like that. We will see. We will see. We will see. Is there audio issues? I don't know. I'm just, I, I don't see anyone else say anything. So, um, Let's see. We got uh, Clark Clint Gaming with the gold super chat. How you doing, Clark, with the $10 gold super chat? Hey, Proto, I just bought an original Takara G1 Raiden gift set. Wow, for $600. That is a, that's a, a pretty good price, my friend. That's actually very cheap. Uh, that was a fair price. Uh, how, how concerned should I be with transforming it? Uh, the only part in my opinion, when it comes to Raiden in all honesty is the Shuki itself. So Shuki, uh, his joints that make his arms for his individual robot mode. I find that the pegs are very, um, fragile and actually, you know, it's a good thing I have Browning here cause I could show you. So, so Browning um, the way that the peg is done, I'll show it with the browning here because it's kind of the same thing. It's like, this is like really new, this browning. So it's almost hard to see, but so in order to do this slider, there's actually, it's a, uh, a peg in there that's with a screw. So with Shuki, it's kind of the same thing. It's like on a mushroom peg, if it's a really tight brand new one, um, just be careful with making the individual robot modes because that's where the fragility is. They're very tiny. Doing the combined mode, it's not too bad. There's some weird hanging elements to it, you know, but at the end of the day, it is um, it is what it is. Your, your Dusty is very Dusty. Is it? No, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. It's just beat up. It's just very beat up. I'm just happy that to have an extra one. I, I love this, this. This has always been a childhood favorite of mine of G.I. Joe. You know, not a very super well-known character, only had a few key episodes like Trader Part 1 and 2 and made cameos here and there. But always it's it's like imagine like if your if your favorite Transformer character was, you know, Beachcomber, you know, like that's kind of the equivalency for me. It's like it's not like a super top tier character, but, you know, he gets a figure here and there. Uh, Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. So, yeah, so. um. But that's all I would be concerned with with the Raiden, in all honesty. But you got it for an amazing price, six hundred. And it's, I, it's again, that's the influence of when something better comes along. We're the only hobby where all it takes is a modern version of a toy to come out to completely derail the value of an old one. You know, it's always like that. 
So it's something where it's like, oh man, like Raiden's mint in box complete 100%, $1,000, 1,200, 1,400, the, the Diaclone versions, let's not even get into that. And then these, these modern versions come out and I love them. They look great. Every time I look at them, I'm like, they're fantastic. And I can't wait for, to get my hands on the, uh, the Diaclone colors, but it's something that at some point, you know, those better versions come out and then everyone, all of a sudden the money and the interest shifts in the same way. I'm pretty sure like the, the value of like the original, you, you can barely see her, but G1 Minerva, like she was like a $2,000 transformer forever. And then those modern versions came out and that kind of cooled the market. You know, then people are like, oh, well, if I want to own a Minerva, I don't have to put it all into this one figure. You know, um, where are we at? Where are we at? Yeah, I have the Tiger Force version too. I, I got that one first, oddly enough. That was the one that was, because that was the closed box one. And that was like easy to find. Um, but I wanted to get a second. Uh, we have another super chat. Let me get to these other super chats because they are very important. Kaz with the two dollar super chat. Love Bravern. Uh, Obari's first and uh, first anime was G One Tune. Yep. Uh, the very first stuff that Obari did is if you actually watch the first three episodes of Generation One, More Me CI Parts One, Two, and Three, you'll notice that Optimus Prime had a very stock kind of transformation that had a very pointed chest. Um. Actually, probably if you want to pinpoint when it is, it's one of his very last transformations at the end of episode three, when it's like after Mirage, you know, makes the Decepticon ship crash and everything, the Nemesis. So he is tra he had a very unique stylized design for Optimus Prime. He was in charge of the transformations for a lot of those scenes for parts one, two, and three. It was one of his first gigs. And I love Obari. Obari is like one of my favorite robot designers of all time. Like all of the brave stuff he's done, all the stuff that he's done, even the human characters, like when he did the Fatal Fury anime and stuff, my Shimaru, wink, wink. Um, it's all great. It's all great. I love him so much. He's so cool. He, he's a man of culture. Let's put it that way. And we all should be men of culture, in my opinion. Uh, Paul with the $5 super chat. How would Prime Cliff Jumper fare going against two deluxes and a Voyager like uh, Legacy Multipack? Uh, would he be a fearless uh, IDW spotlight ch Cliff Jumper? The way I see it is, and I'm telling you, I think it's perfectly timed, is they announced this Cliff Jumper, and anyone who's been following wrestling, Cliff Jumper was voiced by The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. And if you've been following wrestling recently, he uh, has a big angle going into WrestleMania. Uh, it's this this uh, next Saturday, the, the, well the Saturday coming up, so I think it's just perfectly timed. I always imagine that Cliff Jumper as The Rock, who's just this unstoppable, wheeling and dealing, stealing ass kicking machine, you know. So it's just the smell what The Rock is cooking. It doesn't matter what your name is, you know. Do you like pie? Um, so I think it's pretty cool. I love someone suggested on Twitter. I saw a Digibash and it was really good. Someone took that that cliff jumper. Let's just pull up the image for a second. Uh, someone took that cliff jumper, but they did it in the oh I can't reach it right now because it's all in, it's really in the corner of my prime display. They did the tail uh, tailpipe colors. So uh, RC's original partner was tailpipe, and what what Hasbro did is they took the Legends or they called it Cyberverse, but the Legends scale cliff jumper and they gave it colors that represented what tailpipe looked like and the, they didn't look like in the show you didn't get to see it but so someone suggested why don't they do like a deluxe class tailpipe so it'll have that the blues and the whites and i was like that's really smart and what would be cool too is they could then have another excuse to take that prime rc mold for the 50th time and repaint it again and put it out there and then put it in a two-pack with tailpipe and that'd be really, that's, that was, it was, that was very clever. Tailgate, excuse me. That was saying tailpipe. Oh my God. What's wrong with me? Shoot. Cause tailgate was the, the, the blue one. I should have, oh God, I should have pulled that out from the collection. He's all the way in the corner. Like all my, my prime stuff is on the bottom shelving and all like the, the legends are at the bottom, bottom. It's, oh my God. Like that, that was like, when I saw that, I'm like, how did I not think of that? That's such a good idea. You know? And that, that'll make use of the tooling. You have the head. You already have the front of the vehicle. Maybe give him a new weapon, you know, give him a new weapon or something. 
It's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I should have pulled it out to show you guys. I'm going to, I'll take some photos for the Instagram. I'll do that. I'll do, uh, I'll do like a, a, a cliff jumper, like collage. Cause I have like the Terracon version. I have the first edition version. Cause those were very common in Canada. So, you know, yeah, like there you go. Terracon undead cliff jumper. Thank you, James. Like that's like, you know, that one too, I could see them doing the zombie cliff. Some people could call it. There's a lot of, the, the, I think it was officially, they called it Terracon cliff jumper. I think that's was the, uh, the toy name for it. Um, yeah, man, the rock is being a bad guy. It is amazing. He's swearing too. Like he's like saying the F word and everything on TV. It's like, wow. Okay. The attitude era is back. I am very happy with that. I have been watching religiously for years, but what Dwayne has been doing over the past two months has been very refreshing. It's let's just put it this way. If you are a wrestling fan right now, you are eating very good. And if I have one criticism, it kind of sucks that wrestling has to be so amazing right now when a guy who was amazing 20 years ago has to come back to really make us appreciate it. It's kind of like when Hulk Hogan was like at his peak in the 80s. Imagine if we needed to save wrestling and go back and get somebody from the 1960s, like uh, Bruno San Martino or something. So it is kind of a shame, but we, we live in a nostalgia world today. I think everything that's cool today is stuff from 20 years ago. So, and wrestling is no different in my opinion. I think that's, that's the big, the big uh, thing more than anything else. Um, you know, it is what it is, but I love it. I love it. Uh, let's grab a few more questions. How much time we have? Okay, we still got an hour. We're good. We're good. We still got an hour and uh, and some time. To tell the truth, Ryden sucks. No, that's not cool. Um, Brainstorm 2002. I'm surprised they included Browning with Squeeze Play. Again, it that it doesn't surprise me in the sense that if you watch Master Force, there was a connection between Cancer, which is what Squeeze Play's character, this this mold was squeeze play in America, but I mean, it wasn't changed at all. And it was turned into, into cancer in Japan for, for master force. And, uh, it doesn't surprise me at all because the character of Browning was his partner, you know? And I love that, you know, they, if you look at the fine details, like they maintained the two rivets, you're looking at the webcam, you're seeing it in the reflection here, but it maintains the two rivets on the side and that little diaclone, not diaclone, Microman logo there on the hilt. It's actually on the gun. So like Mark, Evan, Sam Smith, whoever was the one who did the sculpting for the weapon, you know, props to you. Cause it could have just been a regular gun, but they made the little extra effort there, you know, made the extra. So that's really cool. I dig it. I dig it. James says, Hey Proto, now that we have the turtle van crossover, was the likelihood of an A team crossover? Um, you know what? I don't know about that one. You know, what's funny. So, so I, I always pay attention to like the, the other toy aisles, right? And Playmobil, um, has really been good with doing like eighties properties. Like Playmobil did the kit car. Playmobil did Ghostbusters. Playmobil did back to the future. A lot of stuff that Hasbro did with transformers now. Um, and Playmobil did a, a team car. Uh, a team wagon, excuse me, you know, would be a Baracus and everything and uh, the van. And I found that one went on sale very quickly. I was almost tempted to get it just because it was so cheap. So I don't know. Like, I mean, if it's cheap to manufacture and the license is cheap to get, then I guess Hasbro will do it. But if there's more of like, if it's not, wor you know, if the, if the squeeze is not worth the juice to, you know, use the term, I don't know. It would be cool the way I envision it, you know, it's the van Mohawk head, you know, Mr. T style on the robot. The rest is history, but I don't know. I don't know. Like it's, it's just seeing how badly the Playmobil ones sold where all the other ones, the Ghostbuster ones, the back, I think the only back to the future one that didn't sell well was uh Marty's, uh, Marty's vehicle, like his vehicle where he did the drag race and he would have got into an accident. Uh, that didn't sell well also, but I mean, the, the kit one, I was waiting for that to go on sale. Cause I wanted to get one. That one looked really cool. I, I have a huge connection with Knight Rider as a kid and everything. So, um, 
it's 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 fantastic. Prince and Phalanx 69, WWE needs right now all the bad news with Vince McMahon. You know what? If there is a time to bring in Vince and make him a villain, now's the time. I know it's, you know, it's it's a little tone deaf of me with all the terrible stuff that he's done, but I'll tell you, if there is a time when reality could be reality, it's now, you know? But I don't think The Rock would want to be in the ring with him. The Rock is quite disappointed, you know? And and it's really bad what's going on. Google that. And then Prince and Phalanx 59 asked a question that I prepared for. Um, so you guys are in for a treat. Uh, what's for dinner, Proto? So guys, so today I went, today I went, um, there was a, this, this is why Montreal is so cool. There was a pop up Simpsons donut, donut place in Montreal today. And uh, I went and it was freaking amazing. So what was so cool about it, I should have taken more photos. It was packed though. It was absolutely packed this place. Um, it's called Homer's Donuts and you get Simpson style donuts. They have the Simpsons arcade machine. You can barely see it on the top right image here. If you look, you could see the, the arcade machine, the top of the cabinet there. So they have the Simpsons arcade machine. It's free to play. It's one of those, obviously the arcade one cabinets, but so... And you have the donuts. You could buy them. They're fairly cheap, you know, because Montreal is it's always cheaper. And they had all kinds of Simpsons paraphernalia. It was like this such this cool. I love these kind of places. And so, like, obviously, when people found out about it, like, like you could see in the top left image, the door is open. That's because you could barely see it. But there's tons of people in there. It was a lineup. It was crazy. And so we went to that. Me and the loved one. And, uh, yeah, we had a, a great, we went, we had that. And then we had Korean fried chicken. That was like, that was, that was in little, little Korea in uh, Montreal. We have a very Korean district in, in the Montreal uh, East area. And they had that pop-up store. That's going to, I don't know how long it's going to be around, but my goodness, it's uh pretty cool, pretty cool. So if you're in the Montreal area and you're down for some Simpsons experience, go check out Homer's Donuts. Uh, and, and it's, and again, it's cool. It's like a little museum to Simpsons also. I dig, you know, I, I dig that kind of stuff in Toronto. There's a place called ultra ramen. I don't know if it's still around, but it's an, it's a ramen place. That's Ultraman themed. And I have tons of photos when I went there. I loved it. And again, it was the same thing. They would play Ultraman music over the, the, over like, you know, over the, uh, the dining area. They had Ultraman episodes playing on a big screen TV. They had Ultraman action figures. All the waitresses wear Ultraman t-shirts. So like, I love, you know, I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. I'm not a big foodie guy. I'm not big on spending a lot of money on food. But if you make like a foodie themed restaurant based on Dragon Ball or Transformers or whatever, I'm going to go check it out. Just, you know, I'll do it once, you know, and I love the Simpsons. And, you know, <laughs> if I could get a pink, pink uh, sprinkled Homer Simpson donut. And again, I should have taken more photos. You can't see it. But in the bottom right of the top right photo, they have special Simpsons uh, boxes that they put your donuts in. It's it's so cool. It's so cool. So go check that out if you're in the Montreal area. Larry, if you're if you're listening or or Wendell or Jaws D or anyone, uh, Homer's Donuts. Go check it out. Really cool. Really, really cool. So that was what I did today. Uh, came a game home a little later, but uh, that's what I did today. Also, I dug that. That was really awesome. And then we had fried chicken afterwards. We have some left in the fridge, so I'm gonna have uh, I'm gonna have uh, the rest of the fried chicken. I would love to post those Ultraman photos. It's just I took a whole bunch, but I just you know I didn't have a place early. I'm not a like I'm on Facebook, but I don't I don't share my life on Facebook. It's, you know I don't care about that. So it's just like, I don't post that stuff. The only place I kind of shared it was I was part of an Ultraman group and I kind of shared them there because I wanted that if people no want to see, um, if they want to see stuff in Toronto, you know, it's like, hey, any local Torontonian uh, Ultraman fans? I, when I was in Toronto, there's a restaurant. I don't know if check on, on Google of Ultra Ramen, it's all one word if it's still around and they might have pictures of the inside of the restaurant. Uh, Mr. Bumblebot with the 18 month super chat. Uh, they need to get Feeny to introduce uh, KRTF toy. I guess you mean Common Rider, I'm going to assume. Common Rider, the problem with that is, is Hasbro doesn't have the rights to it. At one point, it was a Bandai of America thing when they tried to bring over Mast Rider and then Common Rider Dragon Force was the dub name, I think it was. Uh, for Ryuki, 
you know, that's a tough one. That's a very tough item for this market. It never truly found success in the West. And to make an effort to do that, the, unless you mean Knight Rider with KR, that's the only other thing. If, I, if I'm totally off base and you meant Knight Rider, which I don't know, <laughs> and you retracted it. So I don't know. Maybe you meant Knight Rider, but. Uh, Sarah with the super chat, why it appears that Hasbro hates the prime fans. Haha. Ha, they don't get re-releases of first edition and prime figures and third party guys are doing now. That's a question you should ask for Aaron because the first editions were during his era. Was it dragon Knight? There you go. Dragon Knight. I mean, dragon force dragon. I didn't want, I remember I saw the commercial for it and they're like, we got to stop the Cayman riders. And I was like, Cayman riders. Oh God. I ain't watching this. You know? I, like, I love Common Rider. I love Stronger. Kabuto is another one I recommend to people. If you're like, if you're like new to the franchise, like those are some good starters. Uh, Forze was really fun too. Uh, I know people like, you know, Ryuki and some of the others too. Um, but yeah. Oh, so Knight Rider. Okay. There you go. I don't know. When I see KR I, abbreviated, I always think Common Rider. That's the tokusatsu brain, <laughs> you know, Sentai, KR, Ultraman. You know, throwing a little bit of Godzilla, a little bit of Gamera, a little bit of Rodan, you know, have some good stuff. Yeah, but yeah, either way, either way, good stuff, good stuff. Uh, In fandom, Knight Rider is abbreviated KR. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. I didn't know there was like a hardcore. I know there's a, a big Knight Rider modifying car community. I know that much because um, I've seen a lot of stuff on that, but I, I didn't know there was like a huge deep community. There's always a community for everything. I can't, unfortunately can't be uh, known to all of it. Brainstorm 2002. Do you think kit will be retooled in tailgate and wind charger? I think that it's, it's the chicken before the egg. Like I said, I think that, um, you know, when you look at, uh, when you look at, uh, you know, the uh, JP 93, and you go, oh, that's totally going to be a Voyager class red alert at some point armada. When you look at the the whatever that what was the 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 I forget what the name was the Della Fornis Rex or whatever they called the uh, the the uh, other Jurassic Park two pack. I mean, you look at that and you go, oh, that's totally going to be Iguanus from Beast Wars at some point. They'll make an Iguanus figure from that. They'll repaint retool it. There's certain ones where the obvious figure is there but they're going to do it with the retool first and it's the same thing it's like hey we'll just take the engineering and everything that would have made um wind charger and 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 tailgate and then uh go from there you know go from there makes sense you get you make more than one sale uh eyes on ace we need a metabots x transformers when we saw i mean you know what? I loved Metabots, but, you know, and I loved Metabots a lot. I bought a lot of the Metabots merchandise. I bought the Metabots uh, Game Boy Advance games when they came out. But it's because it was so Mega Man to me. It was like Pokemon meets Mega Man. And I really liked Metabots. I even loved the dub, like with Meta B and everything. The card games I collected. I didn't play it, but I collected them because it was cool having the cards. But I found that it didn't it didn't resonate with with people in America. It didn't find an audience. It had that one season. Then they had that like second phoned in Nirvana season, as I like to call it. That was like, you know, half produced in Canada, half produced with Japan as a partnership. And then that was it. Like, I think it it didn't make as big a splash as some of the other brands like a Beyblade or a Yu-Gi-Oh. You know, it, it's more in that monster rancher kind of t category where it survived long enough to have some kind of notoriety, but not enough to be like a big pop culture shakeup. Um, I would like more Metabot stuff. Once in a while, we see a model kit here and there be done by some companies, but it's one of those brands that are kind of unfortunately a little bit in hibernation right now. Um, but I love that brand. Aaron worked on on some of Metabots. So that that's a segment we'll definitely do in the future. And uh, at one point on the Toy Armada, we'll definitely do a Metabot segment because uh, he had a lot to do with the uh, the importing of it. Uh, and the last Metabots game, if I remember correctly, they use uh, sexy girls and mobile phones and stuff like that. So Google that if you're a man of culture. 
Uh, Metabots is copyrighted right now by an F NFT company. Oh, well, that's lovely. Well, row battle. <laughs> what do you want? There you go. Uh, Del uh, Fornimus Rex was the name of my prog metal band <laughs> in high school. What, Ninjatron? What, Dylan? I have no idea what's going on. Uh, Brainstorm 2002. The only collab I want left is Transformers would be Christine. Christine what? What am I missing here? Which Christine? I'm, uh, the Christine, the, no, that's Catherine is the video game from PS3. What's Christine? Must be missing something. Must be missing something. We got 40 minutes left in the chat today. But yeah, a lot of great stuff though. You know, like it's, it's something where, you know, we're, we're eating good as Transformer fans. Like stuff like this, and stuff like this. Christine, the horror movie. Oh, I don't even know that one. That's Was that recent? Was that re... Oh, Christine, the... Oh, my God. I never saw that movie. Really? So here... Fun, fun fact. I worked in a video store between... Gosh, when did Street Fighter Championship Edition come out? I worked in a video store, and I was underage, uh, between 1995 to 19 no no 19 excuse me 1993 to 1997 i worked in a video store and i used to go in all the sections when it was boring quiet that day and just kind of like either read the tape boxes for when video stores were a thing and i've never seen christine that's crazy really like, like, and I looked at everything back in the day i used to remember i used to look at the blob box and i'd be like that guy's face that was like ah you know, on the old cover. Wow, I never saw that one. Well, that's going on. Is that something on Tubi I could find easily? <laughs> Tubi, I find, has tons of horror movies. I wonder if Tubi has that. Let me know which uh, streaming service is on there that's free that I could find it. Otherwise, I got to go to the old Jolly Roger. Let's put it that way. Uh, Comedy 9 with the $2 super chat. Skull Crunchers mold into horrible or bu horrible bullhorn, which is the Master Force name. I don't know. Could that be done? I'd have to get both figures and then put them side by side and see what could. Because like when I look over here, I'm looking at my Titans Return molds. And then when I look over here, you can't see it because it's behind behind these guys. But all my Master Force guys are there. That's why you can see one of the uh, one of the dudes there. I don't know. I don't know if that could be. Hmm. I don't know. I, I, it could be done, but they'd have to really see like, like uh Modutron prime grotesque. I could maybe see if there's more bulk with grotesque, but again, you know, they, they could just like change the arms and legs and maybe it'll make all the difference. You know, you know what I actually watched recently? It's kind of like semi horror, semi like revenge action movie. Um, it was one of, uh, Charlie Sheen's first ever movies that he ever did. This is like a young Charlie Sheen before he was famous. It's called The Wraith. It's on Tubi. Uh, it's the story of a guy who was murdered and then he comes back as a ghost race car driver. That's why I watched it. A ghost race, cry, race car driver that one by one kills his murderers by racing them and killing them by going off the track. And it was an interesting indie fic, uh, flick that Charlie Sheen did when he was really young. And I remember just like finding it by accident while looking through Tubi late at night. And I was going like, oh, the Wraith with Charlie Sheen. What's this? So there's a race car on there. Oh, that's kind of cool. Um, didn't know it existed. And again, I worked at a video store. Had no idea this thing was a thing. I had no idea that it was a movie. And I was just like, wow, you know, and you learn stuff. Because again, I worked at a video store in Montreal. And, you know, I guess I had a limited selection of stuff. Shout out to Video Illusion, my first job. Got paid $5 a week, and then I just put it straight into the Street Fighter II machine <laughs> and the uh, Samurai Showdown machine. Um, Zach Liebert with the $5 super chat. We love a gem of the holograms and Transformers collab synergy. I was about to say synergy would be the choice, obviously. 
Uh, also, what kind of risers do you use for your figures? Are you tired of spice racks? Uh, no, I'm not, actually. Um, I use... I live, I live and die by Ferro Rocher boxes. If you buy, if you buy Ferro Rochers, you get, you get little risers. You know what I mean? Clear risers that last forever. So I have so many Ferro Rocher boxes that every time I got one, I mean, back there, like, like here. So like you guys could barely see it, but so. The Optimus and the Megatron Beast Wars, those are standing on Fair Roche risers. Like no joke. The, the the cheapest, the cheapest uh risers that you could get, in my opinion, is if you go to if you go to like a Dollar Tree, Dollar Amma, there's spice racks. That's one way to get them. Uh, another one is if you go to your local co uh, card shop, like you know, where you could get Magic the Gathering or sports card shops, sometimes the card holders, like if you ask them for like a like they come in different sizes, so you'll have different size risers too. But if you get like, I need a hundred card holder, uh, plastic holder, and it's like a clear plastic box that you could put cards in. Uh, and those are like 50 cents to a dollar. And I think it gets a little more expensive if you get like, let's say, because you could get like the, the 200 card holder. So you could get them ascending. Now, every card store is different. Their prices might be different due to availability, but that's another option if you want something that's a little more flexible. And then, of course, I mean, if you get a present for your girl and you get her some Ferro Rochers, after she eats all the chocolate, make sure you grab the box. <laughs> that's That's always been my uh, go-to. Yeah, the the Dodge Turbo Interceptor, Billy V. That's what it was. I was like, damn, that car is badass. And I'm not big on American vehicles, but that was pretty cool. The car, don't spoil the movie, James. Let people go watch it. It's naked, uninjured, with no eyes. Yeah, it's it's actually it's it's a cheesy '80s movie, but it's fun. It's fun. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Uh, you know, it it was like. It was funny because I was on Tubi and I was just kind of, I was watching Captain Harlock and I was because they recently got Captain Harlock, the whole series, Galaxy Express 39, the whole series, the Captain Harlock movie, which is uh, my youth in Arcadia. And uh, they got the other Captain Harlock. So they had like got all the Captain Harlock stuff recently. It's like they got the trademark for it or something, the license temporarily. And so I started watching those. And then for some reason, like the episode ended of one of my Captain Harlock episodes and it recommended the Wraith. And I was like, what is that? Charlie Sheen. Okay. You got my attention. What's going on? So you find stuff, you know, I, I it, it's cool when you discover things that you, you didn't, it's been around for like 40 years and you didn't even know it existed. And it's like, to you, it's like, you know, it's like discovering gold for the first time. That's always fun. You know, that's the one thing I feel is missing a lot with modern uh, content creation and content consumption is you don't discover stuff by accident anymore. Now you kind of go looking for it. It's suggested to you based on your algorithm. So you're always looking at the same stuff. If I look at trading card stuff, it's going to continue suggesting to me trading card stuff. So it was good. It was good. Uh, Mark Morales with the $5 super chat since we're getting a, a turtle party transformer. Now that I'm, uh, I'm hoping we could get a shredder bot into a technodrome. Um, I would see shredder being the module, like the drill. Cause I could see like the purple and you know, like the spikes kind of working better with that. And Krang, like you said, would be the technodrome. Cause he'd be the larger one. You know, that's a, that's a, bo a bowl kind of thing which is going to have obviously that shell forming to it but i could see krang being the technodrome that would be cool and then where do we go from there do we do the new neutrinos the car the purple car that they used to fly in and do that as one of the neutrinos do we do in april does she turn into the blue channel 8 news news van that'd be kind of cool too or she could turn into the cat she turned into a cat in one episode you could, you could go that deep cut with the mutations line. Uh, Ari Nuts with the $2 super chat. Who and when can we expect a Trash Master repaint? Well, you know, I mean, we looked at the repaints with what they did with the other modulators, with the bone ones and everything. If we do get a Trash Master, and he's our Voyager too, so you have to keep that in mind. It's a larger price point. Uh, I'm scared to say it might end up being like a Hasbro Pulse exclusive if they go that route. 
I don't think they'll waste a retail slot for a for a Voyager class repaint. I mean, if we had Buzzworthy Bumblebee still around, maybe it would like fit in there. Like as again, like a store exclusive or a a, a pulse exclusive. I could see that. You know. So that's like that's a tough one. That is a tough one. Ninja, you like Harlock? I love Harlock. If you're if you grew up in Quebec. Like in Montreal, Quebec, you you turn English channels, you had Transformers, He-Man, G.I. Joe. You turn the French channels, you had Harlock, Captain Abateur, who was called in French. Harlock, UFO Grandizer. Like what, what a weird time to be alive in the 80s when you were bilingual and you could just turn on to French cartoons and you got like all this anime stuff from the 80s. It was wild. I love it. I love uh, Captain Harlock. I love... My Youth in Arcadia is really good, and Galaxy Express 3.9 is... I, I don't like... It's, I know it's old, but I hate people spoiling the ending because it has such a good twist ending to it. Such a great series. I know it's an old series, and people... You know, spoilers is like old news now, but... I mean, damn. Like, I, I, I would love uh, for people to go watch that. With Mite, Mite. Uh... Toy Pit Co. Any thoughts on when the Dynamite 40th anniversary cards might drop? I honestly thought BMAC was going to talk about those on the Thursday because he said he was going to be talking about licensing stuff. Uh, my buddy, my buddy Pulse Dragon here in Montreal, he gets the Diamond distributing uh, magazines, and they always have the updates on like Dynamite trading card stuff. And I know that when that will be available. He'll definitely send me a picture or something to let me know because he'll order it for me. But I don't know. There's no updates. I I the I had the information that was giving given to me from Hasbro Marketing, Jason, and uh, it was just booster packs, clear set tins, uh, special chase cards. You know, complete set tins. If you don't want to have to chase stuff, but you don't get the chase cards, you get foils and stuff. We will see. We will see. I'm excited about it. I'm a big trading card guy. I love trading cards to death. I mean, literally, no joke, like just next to me. I was just sorting these not too long ago. People dig this. Um, it's from Aaron's. It's from, uh, not Aaron, bite my tongue. It's from uh, uh, Derek Wyatt's personal collection. The uh, animated trading cards that they had, those like uh, race and chase, battle and chase trading cards, whole bunch of them whole bunch of them this doesn't even scratch the surface of it so i'm gonna i'm trying to make sets of that so that people could uh pick them up but that's that's i don't even know if that'll be ready for tfcon toronto in time there's so many uh he bought like he bought like so much of it because what happened was he told me um they were our, they obviously they were arcade machines and every time you played you got one card and he said that what happened was, is when they discontinued the arcade machines, they took all the cards out of the machines and they put it like in a long box and they put it in the trash. And then obviously they have like dumpster divers in Japan. And he bought a guy who had like a long box like this of like, not it's it's not complete sets, but definitely a lot of them. So see that at a future, uh, future TFCon uh, parts party at some point. Maybe not this one. Hopefully, I don't know what I'll have done in time. I'm going to have to tackle all that stuff in June and, and uh, May, but we'll see. Uh, Brainstorm 2002. Hey, Proto, I've been looking into Unicron Trilogy toys. Was Rodimus an Energon or Cybertron? Rodimus was the Energon toy. I suggest picking up if you can. I mean, there there's it's a slight difference between the two. But if you could pick up the Japanese version, it's slightly more screen accurate has a different tinge, but the American version is perfectly servable too. That's Energon. Cybertron didn't have Rodimus, but it did have a hot rod uh, homaging red repaint in a character called Excelion. That was a repaint of Hotshot, which was Excelion was what Hotshot was called in Galaxy Force. Confusing. Uh, James Hopkins, if I remember it correctly, Harlock's twist was crazy cool. And at the same time, those were, yeah, it, that's why I know they're old and it's kind of like, ah, you're hiding spoilers on something. It's like 40. Harlock is like, what? Harlock's like 41 years old now, 42, like the manga came out in 79. So it's, yeah, it's, it's still good. 
go check it out. I I know some people don't have patience for old anime art, but it's it's so quintessential. Maybe it's my nostalgia. I could I could recognize that. I get it, but animated Rekar from Trash Master. I am 100% seeing that happening at some point. Again, that's one of those where they thought of Rekar first, but they made Trash Master first instead because they know they'll just do that later. Um Sarah says Monster Ranger was a big hit in South America. You talking about, you're talking, you mean Monster Rancher? Monster Rancher was a big hit in South America under Mexico, sadly, because the yogurt from Next Nestle came with mini figures of the monsters. So was Pokemon for low. It, it was so was Pokemon for low income kids. Well, Monster Rancher's biggest draw was if you played the PlayStation game, if you took like CDs from around your house, it would make custom monsters based off of like the ID codes of the CDs, which was really cool. So people started like, you know, and this is like the early days of burning CDs. So when people found out like really cool um, monsters that you can make, people would be like, hey, if you get like, a, you know, like a, a Spice Girls CD and you like put it in, this specific Spice Girls CD makes a really powerful monster. And so people would burn that Spice Girls CD to use it for the game. Didn't they redo Harlock? Yes, they did a CG remake in 2013, I want to say. And it was pretty good. It was pretty good. It was kind of like it was an unofficial. So I don't want to go down the rabbit hole. There's kind of like two continuities with Captain Harlock. There's like the manga story with a different crew. And then there's like the first TV series. And then My Youth from Arcadia kind of as part of that second continuity. And then the remake kind of like the remake the cg one kind of is based on that first one and it's kind of like a pseudo sequel so it's it's again go down the rabbit hole <laughs> it's 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 great though it's great yeah queen esmeralda is another cool character again my youth in arcadia go check it out such a that if you watch one thing of captain harlock that's well animated that's a little more up to speed you watch youth in arcadia movie or i think it was my Arcadia in youth. I, in French, it was called my youth, youth in Arcadia. So that's what I was familiar with. But my arc, just type Arcadia youth, put it in Tubi. You'll find it. You'll love it. You could thank me later. <laughs> uh, the YouTuber MC Collector 24 was at WonderCon Hasbro meet and greet. He put out in hand images of Swoop looking pretty good. Well, that's great. So when I talk about it on Monday, I'll have some. That's why like it's something where. Monday, we'll probably get some really good stock images and legit images and information probably from BMAC, Mark and Evan or Sam Smith who worked on it. And then I could do a proper segment on Monday to do it all justice and we'll break it down. And I hope you tune in for that and support the pod. Uh, JR Mina, I played Monster Rancher on PS1. I, uh, I was lucky to have a CD with a Phoenix as a monster. There you go. See, JR knows what I'm talking about. My friend Ben back in the day, he was obsessed with Monster Rancher and like he's Chinese. So he had like all these Chinese VCDs and he was just using all the Chinese VCDs. Uh, and it was like he was getting all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, Proto, do you think we'll get a uh, ghost shooter or cab with Chase and an upcoming heat wave? Well, you know what the thing is? That Heat Wave is supposed to be a Voyager class, which is that's a weird size for to have that synergy. So, I mean, if we do get a cab from Heat Wave, it'd be a very large uh, fire truck compared to the other two. Like, I could understand Minerva being a little shorter than everyone else, but at the end of the day, she's still a Voyager and, you know, a Go Shooter would still be a Deluxe. I think it's a Headmaster. They'll they'll have to make the like it's a headmaster junior. I think that Minerva will get redone at some point and she'll be a headmaster junior, not just the legacy one that we got. And then they'll do Go Shooter, aka Sirens, and uh Cab, aka uh Hothead, Heat Head, Hothead, Hothead. I, I only know the Japanese names. <laughs> um Hothead, help me out here. Why am I why am I blanking on that one? Um you know, do him too, but and they'll all be headmasters. They'll do the proper transformation. Uh, where are we at? Sandbush had had a song in the rain. Yeah, uh, Hearts versus. Yeah, I I actually popped when I heard that he was he was dry. The guy, the main character was driving down the roads, and you hear Hearts versus Heads, and I was like, that's Stan Bush because 
my wife, she watches Korean dramas. So the subtitles are always on, on my TV. And whenever music plays in the background, it'll always say the name of the song and the singer. And I was like, ah, oh, Stan Bush. There's a, there's a great soundtrack in that movie. There's a lot of other great songs. Hosehead. Thank you. Hothead. What is wrong with me? Hosehead. Jeez. Let me tell you something, guys. I know tons of stuff about Transformers, and then I forget just as much just to remember the new stuff. It's Sometimes it's too much. Um, J.R. Mina, hey, Proto, do you think Hasbro Takara was able to, to make Squeeze play in Fangry Headmasters while Minerva wasn't? I think that when the when they made that uh that Alita one, that was planned from the get-go to be half Minerva, half Alita One. I think that when we got the Fangry and the Squeeze play, that was afterthought. The 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 gap between Squeeze Play and <laughs> and uh Draculus, aka, you know, what would be um now I'm blanking on his name. What is with me today? I'm so tired. I'm sorry. Uh, with uh, not Fangry. Come on, come on, Proto. What is with you today? Literally, we're we're talking all about this today with another friend. But anyways, you know, like the distance between the two from Titans Return and now is so much that it's like it gets to a point where there's no way. There is no way that the one was planned with the other. It was something where they looked at the tooling of it and they went we could figure something out they looked at like the tool i wish i brought the other one to show you like they looked at the tooling and they were like yeah we could figure something out with this mind wipe thank you what is with me today i am so tired i apologize i apologize people i should be more on top of these things here comes the sea of mind wipe but you know again the distance between that like the mind wipe and the the fangry well, not the Fangry is the new one, but the Mind Wipe, we're talking Titans Return. So that's 2016. Am I correct? 2015 about, you know, so that's not even the same crew. You're talking like like early John Warden era and like Mark was maybe painting, you know, like hand prototypes at the time, you know, so it's something where. To me, that's just like them looking at the toy years later and going like, you know what? If you take the arms off and put new arms and if you take the legs off and I mean, this piece could like, you know, be a whole new head sculpt and brand new head sculpt and everything like so they they really. They really fucking blew it out of the water, like I was so surprised. Uh, James Hopkins, the fact you couldn't remember his name means his powers are working on you. He made me mind wipe. Yeah, seriously, eh? And he makes people tired, too. At least in the Headmasters anime, you know? Yeah, it was just... I, I, I had a long day today. I had a long day today. We did our winter tires today. I went out to eat. I had the chicken. I had the, the, the donuts. Nice, greasy, unhealthy day today. You know? Came home. Did some stuff, too. You know, what else did I do today? Oh, I had to, was talking with Goober also for a bit while trying to get stuff done also. Like we were, we were busy, busy day today. Um, But yeah, good stuff though. But I, again, it's to me, the crew at Hasbro right now, they're really, they're really doing some like amazing stuff right now. They really are. It's, it's quite incredible. Ooh, I mistransformed him. Oh, um they're really doing some incre incredible stuff right now. Like it's, it's, it gets to a point where now it used to be back in the day, you know, you looked at a mold and you just kind of like, okay, here's the obvious repaints and then that'll be it. Right. And now it's like, you look at a mold and you go, Oh, these are the obvious repaints. And then, Oh, by the way, we did different arms, different legs and a new head and only the chest or maybe the joints are the same. And here's your, you know, I don't know, back street, you know, old trigger, trigger bot you know and you'll be like what how do they fucking pull that off that's amazing you know so <laughs> goober's not exhausting it's just we're, we're working we're helping him with his uh his future youtube stuff i wanted to help him out with it uh modern hasbro designers yeah man they're they're, they're doing good stuff they're doing good stuff it, it you know what it's it really shows that 
you know, in order for this brand to survive, you have to, you legitimately have to do things that are out of the box. You got to really start doing things different. And I imagine Aaron, if he was still with them, that would probably be doing the same thing anyways, because you can't do the same thing forever. You know, you cannot do the same thing forever. Backstreet's back. All right. I'd love to see a new Backstreet. That'd be cool. If we ever get like a good, like, you know, you could have done it from uh, Power of the Primes. Power of the Primes uh, jazz. They could have done a Backstreet, I guess. Make You could plug two guns on the back there. Goldblug needs his throttle bot friends. Oh, yeah. That'd be cool, too. Get uh, get roll bar. Get an updated roll bar with his cool windows. Fun fact with roll bar, he has window stickers that reflect the same rocky scenery as the G1 uh, logo. Um, JR Mina, Proto, uh, were you able to watch Godzilla Minus One? What are your thoughts? Will you be watching Godzilla King Kong? I have not seen Godzilla Minus One yet. It's just here's the thing i have a friend that wants to watch it with me and he doesn't want me to watch it without him because we're big toku and and sf fans as we call it in japan so i'm going to be watching it with him at some point uh godzilla king kong looks fun i mean i liked the king kong movie so it should be fun i will see it at some point i'm less excited about it i want to see more godzilla one because everyone is talking about it and saying how amazing it is so I'm just going to wait for my opportunity to see it my way, if you know what I mean. Um, great chat indeed. Thank you, Goober. But yeah, wide load. The orange, uh, you, you can almost see it. There, there's wide load. There's all of them up there. There's wide load. There's searchlight. You can barely see Chase is over there. And then, of course, this wall here cuts off the others. I love the problem with the... Uh, with collecting those, though, is sometimes the, the pullback is broken with some people. But I love them. They have the worst articulation ever, but I love them. They're great. They're absolutely fantastic. They're absolutely... Oh, Joseph's here, too. What's up, Joseph? What? Welcome, welcome. I am looking forward to San Diego Comic-Con. It is going to be absolute madness. Absolute madness. Absolute madness. We're going to have to go out to dinner with the Hasbro guys. I've already was talking with them to work something out. We're going to chill, do some business. J.R. Mina still couldn't find the Godzilla minus one toy. Jolly Roger. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, you always, you know what it is? I always say you have to wait until, um, until China has empty theaters and then uh, you'll get your good, uh, you'll good, you'll get your good source. Like I went to see the Super Mario movie twice uh, in person. And then uh, I was like, oh, I can't go a third time, you know? And so I just kind of, you know, went on the high seas, army matey, to watch it a third time. Uh, Brainstorm 2002. Same, I love my G1 roundabout, even though he's not all that great. Yeah, you know, there's a charm with those old guys, you know? It's something, it's like GoBots, you know, you go back and you mess with them and you go, you know what? These ain't too bad. You know, they ain't too bad. Some of them are pretty cute. Yeah. There's fun with them. Uh, where are we at? Sarah, why Skull Cruncher hasn't been remolded into Alligator Optimus Prime? Well, tell Super 7, you know, you could buy the Super 7 one. I'm surprised they didn't re remold the Alligator uh, skull cruncher into megatron from beast wars they did the head they didn't do the whole body so i'm surprised that didn't happen that was the one i was kind of looking forward to because when they did uh, when they did this one here i always keep this one close by i was uh happier than uh you know imagine i'm struggling here with a uh there we go struggling with a play uh play school one eh. I was so happy when that one got made. That's like super deep cut. All it needs is a Predacon logo on there. Uh, I'm not missing anything. Uh, Tom Laney, did you? Uh, uh, they did talk about making three mail order Omnibots. I have not heard anything lately. I mean, two out of the three are trademarks that they own. 
you know, so it's only a matter of time that sooner or later they're going to have to do a trademark of those guys. Uh, the only one that they don't own the trademark for is Overdrive. So, I mean, and I think that was an issue even back with alternators. That's why I'm looking up over there at the alternator display. Um, because there was a alternators character that was clearly overdrive, but they didn't have the overdrive trademark even back then. So they called it wind charger. And I believe they still called it overdrive on vinyl tech side. So that's kind of, you know, it sounds silly, but that's kind of the reason sometimes these characters don't happen is you just don't have a trademark and yeah, you can make a new trademark name for them. You could call them hyperdrive, which is actually a micromaster. You know, you could call them, I don't know, space drive or something, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, I'm not missing anything. Proto, did you see Albagas is getting a Blu ray domestic release? Yeah, well, that's uh, through um, Right Stuff, no? They're doing it. They always do great stuff, those dudes. Uh, Prince of Phalanx 59, the new G.I. Joe retro beachhead that has shown at WonderCon is looking so good. Hey man, Beachhead is always awesome. I love Beachhead. He has such a cool design. But the sad thing is, is that you want to get a really good Beachhead figure. There's a Fortnite figure that looks exactly like Beachhead or a little bit of Firefly. Uh, they both have a similar kind of vibe. Um, so it's like you could have got a really good Beachhead figure through Fortnite a while back. Uh, Billy B. So during Aaron's era, the first era, we started to refer by eras by designers who came before. Uh, that would be Aaron. That would be Tony Valida. The something with a V during the Beast Wars stuff. Who passed away? A lot of those Beast Wars guys aren't with us anymore, which is pretty sad. Um, Tony Vadilla. He was the guy who named the Maximals pretty much because he owned a Nissan Maxima. Well, that's pretty much the story with that. Uh, he was kind of like the head dude at the time. All those guys are no longer with us, which is such a shame. Old, old, old school toy designers from back in the day. Um, Joseph Ritter for the 199. Any chance Hasbro makes throttle bots chase and freeway? I totally is going to happen at some point. Those are cars. Like it's, it's car toys are way more possible. Chase is a trademark that Hasbro has. And they'll have to use it at some point. They've already used it once before for our rescue bots. They'll have to do it again. I want to make sure if Aaron replies, because he's not a uh, a green name, so it doesn't pop up in my eyes as easy. Like I want to make sure. Be stopped. Um, no oh, Disco Disco Tech did him. Okay. Oh, okay. Disco Tech. They did the um. They did the Machine Robo box sets. No. Because those are fantastic, too. Those I thought would never happen. Like, Battle Hackers? Wow. Domestic, re like, release? That's great. Um, Joseph Ritter with the $2 Super Chat. Okay, we already got that one. Sorry. Um, oh, here we go. YouTube member question. Someone has Studio Series 86 swoop display picks up on the Facebook. We'll catch it. We will catch it. We'll we'll definitely get them, and we'll uh, we'll talk about them later this week for sure. You know, we'll break it down like we always do here on the pod, like we always do. And then we'll we'll really make sense. We'll get clear photos. We'll, we'll be able to see the the plastic quality of those swords and figure out what's going on. And I'll do a nice visual segment. You know, this was all stuff that dropped today. I wanted to make sure you guys got nice little looks of everything. I mean, that's all that's all we had up to that moment <laughs> before we went live. But uh, I'm sure we'll get better photos. Okay, yeah, Disco did do the Machine Robo. Perfect. Dorvac, also the Dorvac one. That one I didn't get. I should have got that one, too. Should have got that one. Good music in Dorvac. Um, but yeah, we'll get, we'll get more photos. We'll get more photos soon. Um, Prince and Phalanx, the three and a quarter O-ring retro Ghostbuster figures are priced well at 44 for a four-pack. That's not terrible. That's not terrible considering that the you know we get a lot of we get a lot of those like o-ring flavored kind of reissues and granted those o-ring reissues come with a lot of accessories but those things are like what $14 you know now granted the ghostbuster one how many things does it come with do they all just come with backpacks and and busters and maybe one capture 
and no ghosts? Like what is the what is the pack in accessories? Because that's where you know it's it's probably right on the number when you think about it. J9. J9 is another great one. Super obscure robot, super robot anime with another shocker spoiler ending. Do not spoil it. Surprise ending on that one. Tomino level. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> um, a lot of good ones, man. A lot of good ones. It, and it's all stuff I would, I'm so surprised that we have DVD releases of. Like it's stuff I would have never imagined they would have done really deep, like local. That's it's something I would expect like a fan sub community to do. Disco lost the license to J9 early. And by the way, guys, all these things we're mentioning, J9, go check them out. They're, just go well, watch a YouTube intro. You get an idea. All super obscure robot stuff that influenced Transformers throughout the years in a lot of ways. Um, oh, because it got imported into Japan. Yeah, well, see, that's the thing with DVDs is is like Japan has this like rule. It's like if they didn't get a DVD box set or Blu-ray, then no one else is allowed to get it. Like they're very strict with that. And I get it. I understand because DVDs are way more expensive over there. So if an American market gets it first, then they just go, well, it's cheaper in America and they rather import the American ones. So uh, Sarah says, Aaron told me that it was just a coincidence, but have you noticed that a majority of Transmetal 2 figures have his beast arms like shoulders or chest chest armor? It's probably just the way the transformations were. I mean, when you look at like Dinobot, that does that does apply. But then when you look like you look at guys like, say, uh, Cheetor, that doesn't apply, you know. But, you know, it, it's hit or miss. The the smaller ones, too. Oh, what, did Aaron reply somewhere? Oh, here we go. Depending on how you look at it, but toys before me was Brian Lawrence. Okay, there you go. Thank you, Aaron. Brian Lawrence. Throw that in your Google machine. Throw that in the old Google machine. Um, Billy B says for Aaron, thank you, Aaron. Would love to see a podcast with all the lead designers. That would be wild. Well, that's something we've been trying to kind of like we've been trying to like it, it's funny when we did the the Beyblade segment, it worked great. Like the we did like this whole thing, and then Aaron tried to do one with Steve Bono for other stuff, and for some reason his audio wasn't working. What we're going to probably have to do again is we're going to have to use something like a third party kind of streaming service. And then we'll just record that stream privately and then edit that and then put that out. And the quality might not be as good, but at least we'll get something out there. And then I could just edit it and maybe make the audio look a little better and sound a little better. But we'll get something done. We'll definitely get more of those. I mean, it would be so cool if we could get Yoketron. Uh, Yoketron. Yoke-san. Because he's his English is more functional compared to a lot of the other designers. So we could get like Yoke san and just get him to talk about like early Diaclone and Takara and Micro Man and you know the frame of mind and the thinking back then. Like that would be wild to get him on. That'd be really cool. That'd be awesome. And we'll see. We will see. Stay tuned for that. You know? Stay tuned. I can literally, you know it's crazy. Like like Mark, I could easily, and Evan even more so. As an Evan, I could easily get on the podcast, but I would feel guilty bringing him on because I know that people are going to want, will keep asking him new news information. And I would just want to just talk about his history with the brand, like growing up. Like I wouldn't even want to talk about new stuff because I've talked with him before about it. It's like, yeah, I could come on and we'll talk Transformers. But it's like, I, I feel like, what people are going to expect of him, especially if we do a live stream, will will it won't be fair to him because everyone's going to be like, "What's the latest? This when is this coming out?" Because all you have to do is watch a Transformer live stream, the fan streams, and then read the chat, and yeah, <laughs> a lot of grateful people. Um, where are we at? Where are we at? Patrick Brown, dropping off. Thank you. Good night, Proto. Thank you. Happy Easter. Thank you, and take care, my friend. And then get those after Easter sales. It's not so much about Easter Monday, but Boxing Easter Tuesday 
when all your when all the chocolate goes 50% off that is truly the real celebration <laughs> i love um cadbury the, the egg minis i love those i love those so much because they have a little bit of vanilla in them mm. the cadbury eggs the min but not the cream ones the minis the mini chocolate ones with the caramel with the 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 candy shell on them love those those are so good so whenever they're on sale i just buy a whole bunch um prince of alex 59 it'll be cool to hear his retrospective on transformers yeah it'll be, it, you know what when yoke san you're talking a japanese perspective which i know it sounds like oh proto you're so racist no but there's there is there's such a different there's such a different approach to life when it comes to that kind of stuff because it's the same thing with miyamoto with, with with video games like he he's done very deep interviews back in the day with iwata san before he passed away and when those two would talk you see there's a there's such a deeper a deeper business mentality and creativity and it's like man oh man good stuff you know so i'd love to like hear yoke san's take especially as like you know when you're talking like you know, when you're talking like a guy who worked in the late 70s with Takara and how different things are throughout the years and work, you know, making molds with wood before you made the prototypes like that's so much so many cool questions that probably were never asked ever by anybody. Because no one ever no one ever cared. You know, it's it's so shameful. It's like no one ever cares. You know, it was great. Hascon had Yoke san and Kuniharu san were there. And no one cared. They were just sitting there chilling, doing autographs. And everyone was too busy taking pictures of the new power of the prime toys. And I remember Kuniharu-san, who created Hot Rod, was, had had a, a spot where you could get his autograph. And literally, you just had to go in line. And literally, I went in line. There was one person in front of me, got an autograph, went back, and then went back in line again and went, can I get another autograph? Like, cause I want him to sign my hot rod spoiler. I want him to sign a, an eight by 10 with all his designs on it. You know, cause it said one per person, one autograph for sure, but there was no line cause no one cared, which is, uh, it's just, I don't know. It's just me who I have such an appreciation for creators and designers and stuff like that, that it's just, it's, and then everyone is, uh, is taking photos of those toys, but the people who created them are right there and they didn't care. And it was just like, I don't know. I don't know. It's it, they're they're free to do what they whatever they want, but I mean sometimes it's just it's kind of sad, you know. And then Peter Cullen shows up and ah, you know, and then it's like oh my god, and it's like, come on guys, you wouldn't have Peter Cullen if you didn't have uh, you know Kojin Ono, you know. Kojin Ono, you wouldn't have Peter Cullen. Let's put it that way. Um, Talib, uh, we know a lot of stuff is coming. I, I, I like hearing the design process behind stuff in general. Yeah, of course. Well, that's, what's fun. And it also helps you understand better. You know, it helps you understand this hobby better. Like people, this podcast has, you know, and I don't want to take too much credit for it, but this podcast changed completely how people look at listings, trademarks, and, and how we approach this hobby now at figuring out what's going to come in the future. Like, no one ever had those conversations before I kind of started doing that, where it was always more just, you know, and no, I don't want to throw shade at the other podcasts, but it was always just more looking at the surface level and critiquing that surface level and not understanding what came before and what will come after from a business standpoint, from an engineering standpoint, from a design standpoint, from a factory standpoint. Like I could go on and on, you know? Sarah. Have you seen the Gotham Guardians, the combiner of Batwing and Batmobile from Spin Master? I have no idea what you're talking about, but I do want to see that. That sounds cool. Is that like uh like the the Kitty brand stuff, or is that legitimate Spin Master and it's not uh not part of their um what's it called there? What was it? Imagine X subline of stuff. Transformer Finance, yeah. I was the first one to ever bring up Transformer Finance. Good lord, you know. Do you know how much how much money I made, you know, buying and selling Transformers throughout the years and and always making the right calls. And I worked at Burger King, you know. So I would take that few money. It's anyways, I don't want to brag about it, but it's like 
you know, that's why I did the podcast. I wanted to put that information out there. I did my very first transformer finance segment at TFCon. I did how to save money with transformers. I did a whole panel about it, like back in like 2014 or something where I was just like, here's how you save money. Boom, 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 boom. Like it was like a very like simple version of it pretty much. Obviously things have changed since that panel. A few of those, the, those pieces of information, the gold rush has run out in some of those areas. Um, James Hopkins, Proto, you also have a leg up on most of the other YouTubers because you work in, well, it's, I don't, I don't have like, let's put it this way. I don't say anything that I shouldn't be saying. Let's put it because you could work in an industry, but at the same time, like, so last week, guys, remember how I said, Hey guys, just to let you guys know, there's something that's behind the scenes that's going to be leaked out later this week. And what was that? That was the Ginrai I was talking about. The images were available. They were available Saturday night, but it's not my place to put that out there. You understand? I don't want to be the one responsible for the leak. If some guy, other guy wants to do it, the second the genie's out of the bottle, then I'll talk about it. And that's the thing. Like it's, I don't have a leg up with that because I don't choose to be the guy who does that. You know? Do I have the knowledge from the industry? That's a different story. Yeah, of course. There you can't touch that. But that's a whole other conversation. But in terms of like the inside stuff, I don't I leave that to the to other people to do. That's not my responsibility. I don't want to be responsible for the leaks happening. I don't want to be responsible for information being out there, you know. I end up I look, I the, the marketing guys will send me images and there's an NDA on it. And usually what happens is, is I look at that and I go, eh, TFW 2005 will post it. And then when they post it, then I'll know I'm clear. Because if Tony Bacala will post it, which is t TFW, Tony's going to post it, then we're good. Then we're good. Because at least Tony could get in trouble if he didn't mean to post it early. You know? I love you, Tony. I love Tony. Um, but yeah, you know, so it's, it is what it is. It is what it is. You know, every everyone has their own talents and their own things. We all people people succeed in their fields when they stick to what they're good at. You know, and uh, I'm good with robots, not just the ones that are uh, owned by Takara Hasbro. Uh, oh my God, we passed two hours. Oh, you guys, you guys tricked me. You guys got an, you got an extra seven minutes out of me. All right, everybody, we're done for tonight. We had a great time. We had a great time. A lot of good reveals. A lot of good stuff. We'll definitely. Uh, oh, is the headmaster over there? Oh, I left the headmaster over there. Oh, geez. Anyways, uh, oh, it's true because it would have made the robot mode look weird. Um, yeah. So we'll we'll definitely we'll probably on Monday we'll do a uh, we'll do a, a segment on the swoop. We'll have some updates and some brand new images. So we'll we'll dive deeper into it and talk about plastic qualities and stuff. So be sure to check that out. You know. We'll definitely uh, cover that for you. Go check out the new Toy Armada segment. Go check it out. Me and Aaron here. I'll put the slide up for you guys. Uh, uh, go check out the Toy Armada segment. Me and Aaron talking about Energon Supalinku. You know, so go check out that segment too. Be sure to check that out. Aaron, of course, also has his sale. Again, don't forget that. Archermonster.com forward slash shop. Check out code spring clearance. Go do that. You know. And of course, Symbiote Studios. Go check out Symbiote Studios, all the new ones. Get the Ultra Magnus. Get the Hot Rod. Get yourself a... Guys, guys, guys. You're sleeping on Hound. Get yourself a Hound. You know, Hound's like awesome. I love that one. The Mango Hound, I like to call him. He looks so cool. Um, I like Hound. He sounds like Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> oh, we got a super chat. Okay, we'll do one more super chat, and then we'll call it quits tonight, guys. Uh, Kevin PH with the five dollar super chat. We now know uh, we now we now we now just need a Masters of the Universe crossover to complete the four horsemen of '80s toy lines. Oh man, He Man's doing everything. He Man, He Man, and Ninja Turtles have crossed over with practically everything. Ninja Turtles even more so. Ninja Turtles is like done everything, everything. Like I I covered that like when we talked about the 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 rumored the rumored Renaissance project. I talked about how like Ninja Turtles has done every brand, you know, even stuff that you can like Star Trek they've done, you know, 
there was going to be a Star Wars one too. It it didn't it didn't meet the cutting room floor in the end. But we had like a Princess Leia, April O'Neil. You know, like it was so cool. So uh, yeah, totally. And of course, Prince and Phalanx fifteen. I went the two dollar one more one more hour proto guys. I got to go to sleep. I was forgetting Transformer names today. Like it's shame on me. Like the fact I forgot Mind Wipe is going to make me lose sleep. And Hosehead. Hosehead was the first ever Headmaster toy I ever owned. And I totally forgot his name because I remember Cab now more than ever because of Master Force. That's when you know I'm tired when I'm forgetting my my TFs. But we're going to call it quits today, guys. It was a fantastic evening together. Thank you for all the super chats and the love and support. As always, once again, if you want to continue supporting the podcast, Patreon link down there. Come join the Patreon. Usually is the best way to help support the podcast. Patreon isn't your thing. There's also the join button where you could be those beautiful green names who are shooting all the questions here today. And, uh, you know, some people double dip and they do both. I know a lot of people always say double dip, do the green name and the Patreon, you know, whatever you want to do that helps support the podcast. Thank you for all the love and support. We had a fantastic evening together of robots and thank you for all the guests that came into the chat today too. I know there was another Hasbro dude that popped in also. I don't know if he wants to be named, but he's at WonderCon right now. So he's bored out of his mind. I know that, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyways, we'll talk later, guys. Take care, everybody. Take care of yourself, your loved ones, your friends, and your family. It's a beautiful world out there. And just enjoy it. Enjoy it. Go for a walk. Get some fresh air. It's summer now. You could go for a nice walk. I'm out of here. I'm going to go have some fried chicken. <laughs> Take care. I'm out.